Hello everybody, we're jumping the tracks. We're going from the menu side to the monster side. Content is uh, a struggle, but we have a lot of tools that we're going to be using. I'm going to create a slime today. I've already created the material because that involves some image editing and stuff. I'm going to explain how I created the material because the material is basically a palette swap tool. Um, so in the long run, materials are going to be a big part of how we make monsters that use similar assets look quite different. Uh, and more tools include uh, some uh, blend keys, attachments, stuff like that. When we do our palette swaps, they're not going to be simple palette swaps, but they will let us stretch our monster content. And the material is the first part of that, because what I've got here is a green blob material. But it's very easy for me to take this green blob material and change it into, say, uh, a gold blob material, whatever you need. Uh, and you can also change uh, all of the all of the details involved in the specularity of the material uh, and how it looks, how glossy it is. So you can get a lot of different performance out of it. Uh, it's not just a palette swap. You can make the light hit it completely differently. But as you might guess, this material is not a Unity default shader. Um, Unity default shaders are pretty limited. And so I use a tool which is called Shader Forge. It's really very, very good, but I obviously don't have the rights to redistribute it, so I can't give you this tool. That's why I created the shader in some other project, and I just imported it. I can distribute the shader I created, and I'm going to give it to you, but I can't redistribute the library I used to create it. The shader I used has a lot of tools in it that are not normally available. Most uh, notably is the Specular Power um, texture. That's what gives us this nice speckling. If we don't have the specular power tex texture, then we just get a perfectly round little blob uh, of light, and that's no good. So it's really important to have the, uh, the specular power. It gives us the look of uh, a really uneven mottled shining surface. Uh, you can get something similar using normal mapping, but uh, this combines the two, and I think it's a better look. Anyhow, that material aside, uh, we are going to go ahead and create the body of our blob. And we're going to do that here in Blender. If you've never used Blender, uh, this may be a little bit too fast for you. But if you have used Blender, you can follow along and it shouldn't be too difficult. The core of our blob body is a UV sphere, as you might expect. That looks pretty decent. And what we're going to do is I'm going to pull over my uh, tablet. There we are. And we're going to go and shape this using the, um, let's hit 5, go into, there we are. We're going to shape this using the sculpt mode. Sculpt mode is a lot easier if you have a tablet. Um, you can use your mouse, but it is a little bit difficult. I find it a little bit difficult to use the mouse. There we go. We've just pulled our sphere into something blob-like, but that doesn't look exactly like I want it to look. So we're going to take our thumb tool. Let's go ahead and adjust some of these parameters. And this will give it a little bit of that uneven blobby shape that we all know and love from our weakest enemies in every RPG ever. Now, obviously, you can make your blob look however you'd like. Uh, my blob looks like a kind of ugly, blobby blob. Um, but I know that, you know, cute, perfectly spherical blobs are po quite popular, uh, and there's no reason that you have to create your blob to look like my blob. Obviously, my blob will be in the project as a downloadable, you know, part of the project, and you can use it however you'd like. Um, so now the last thing that we want to do is just make sure that our blobs ground coverage is a little bit low. Um, we don't want our blob to float off the surface because that makes it look more like a bean bag and less like a blob. There we are. So that's great, right? Uh, let's go ahead and pull up this back end, or is it the front end or left end, whatever, and then we'll put this away. Now, later on, we're going to have a blob that has a mouth and some eyes and stuff, but um, I don't want to waste your time with that at the moment, so for now we're just going to save this. I've already put it in the right spot. It's up here in this Blender's directory. One of the thing you want one one thing you want to be careful of, if you're using Blend Blender files directly like I am, 
you need to be careful because Unity will import all of the materials and it will stick them in this materials folder. But Unity will be happy to re-import the materials over and over and over and to overwrite any materials you've put in this folder. That's why my materials folder is completely separate because that way there's no overlap and there's no risk of Blender accidentally overwriting any of my favorite materials. Anyhow, we can just drop this slime into the picture. It's over here. And we can go down into materials. We can drop our slime material on it and, ooh, it's really, really shiny and flat. What's going on? Well, we forgot to UV map it. And by forgot, I mean we didn't. I, I, I was going to show you that that didn't work without it. So there's a lot of ways to do UV mapping, uh, and it's quite an art and quite a difficult art. But the core idea behind UV mapping is um, you're going to have breaks in your texture, and the question is where that's okay. So I'm going to pull over a panel, and we're going to go ahead and look at our UV map. So if I were to highlight everything and just say, okay, well, just, just unwrap it, I do get these circles here, but the problem is that these are not all created equal. Uh, if I look down at the top of my slime, you can see that it doesn't have the kinds of compression that we're looking at. So this UV map will end up with a large amount of texturing at the, uh, at the edges and a small amount of texturing at the top, and the way that'll look is a little bit awkward. I'll show you. So I guess it's actually not very clear because of the way that the blob just happens to be. But up here, the pixels are much, much larger. And down here, the pixels are much, much smaller. They take up less space. And you can see that in how grody it looks down here and how smooth it looks up here. Uh, if I wanted to fix that, I would put in some more cuts on the surface of the, uh, of the blob. So for example, if I decided that I would like to just cut here and here, Oh. I could mark that seam and then I could unwrap like this and you can see how it cuts these into uh, more shapes and while that might seem like it's not uh, there's no point to it it does mean that our pixels at the top we can get that nice grody look all the way around but we do have this nasty seam running along our monster um, if you're a good texture artist, obviously you would want to paint your textures specifically to minimize those seams. Um, however, in our case, we're not going to bother, so we're just going to undo this, and we're going to live with this particular set of stretching uh, pieces. But there is some stuff we can do. One of the cool things about this particular blob is that we don't have to worry about overlapping faces. So we're just going to go and select all of this stuff, and scale it up uh, because it's okay if it overlaps with someone else. And that'll give us a little bit more detail and make our top look not quite as bad. So this is our slime. This is how it looks. And if you want to adjust the material, it's very easy to do. And you can get a look for, you know, things like, ooh, you want a kind of fun glowy slime. That's an, that's an interesting look for a slime. Um, yeah, sure, let's leave it like that. That looks kind of neat. I like it. So there, we've just built our slime, but our slime isn't animated. Um, it's not rigged. It doesn't have a mouth, doesn't have eyes, but it's placeholder art. We'll go ahead and add in the details later on when we have time, uh, but for now, this slime is what we need, and in the next episode, we're going to make it so that this slime has health and we can kill it.